This week, we turn to Emil Durkheim from the same historical period as Karl Marx, albeit from France rather than Germany. While Durkheim saw many of the same problems and issues with the rapid rise of industrialization, urbanization, democratization, and secularization, his orientation or view was entirely different from that of Marx, who saw only the inherent conflict underlying the relationship between two social classes, the owners of the means of production or the bourgeoisie and the workers or the proletariat. Durkheim saw a much richer division of labor, a much more potential for cooperation as well as coercion across power relationships. Durkheim was much more focused on how a new secular ethical system might emerge as the traditional religions withered away and how the various divisions and groups might maintain solidarity in the face of rapid social changes and social mobility. Durkheim was keenly interested in the question of social or moral order and social solidarity, how social order is achieved and how it is maintained. He viewed society as a complex system of parts that are interdependent with interrelationships formed by complementary functions like teacher, student, doctor, patient, or engineer. All parts are necessary for the functioning of society and his ideas eventually materialized into the thought school or paradigm called structural functionalism. Durkheim used the metaphor of the human body complementing the emerging natural sciences and medicine, but also most likely picking up the metaphor of society as a body from early Christianity carried forward in France through the Roman Catholic Church. For Durkheim, society was a level of reality unto itself, a reality sui genre, meaning a classification in and of itself. Society for Durkheim is something greater than the sum of the individuals who comprise it, and it has its own reality. Like Marx and other sociologists of the same period, Durkheim was keenly in tune with the transformation of social relationships brought about by industrialization. You can see concrete examples of the transformation in the video on the 212, 2012 Olympics in London, which depicts the history of the Industrial Revolution, or you can also see it in the New York Times article on the movement of young women from rural villages in India to urban areas. In the latter, you can view more closely the pluses and minuses of industrialization and urbanization, the freedom it offers alongside the hazards and the dangers. Key to the modernization process is the division of labor, which is a source of social differentiation and interdependence. Here, Durkheim perhaps stands in the middle between the laissez-faire economists and emerging social science, whose philosophies propelled the robber barons of the Industrial Revolution and the workers. Durkheim sees the emerging professions as providing the potential for a better life without turning a blind eye to the potential for disruption, enemy, and exploitation. Like sociologists during the period of the first and second industrial revolutions, Durkheim analyzed the contrast between or the contrast or the differences between traditional village societies and the emerging 
modern, secular, urban world. His key concepts to describe the differences in solidarity were organic, meaning this interdependent or mechanical, which was based on likeness. Perhaps most innovative uh, and famous was Durkheim's study of suicide, which he viewed at the level of social facts. Rather than looking at individual suicides as a clinical issue, Durkheim examined suicide rates, social facts emanating from the social fabric, so easily torn by massive broken human relationships or so much control over human life that it barely seemed worth living. Durkheim used two key societal level variables, social integration and social regulation, to outline the contours of his four types of suicide, altruistic, egoistic, anomic, and fatalistic. Especially important in moderating the disintegrative forces of social change were stable social institutions, marriage, families, the emerging public school system, church. For the latter, Durkheim was not necessarily speaking of religious doctrine, but rather the function of specific religious organizations in binding individuals together through ritual. Durkheim's understanding of the sacred and the profane provided the foundations for expanding sociological analyses of the religious functions in secular or civil religions. New Yorkers can easily relate to the many socially binding rituals that surround the commemoration of 9-11 with all of the sacred symbols attached. Whereas we once thought of sacred symbols and the sacred as pertaining to the holy or supernatural, contemporary sociologists have expanded these to include a broader range of symbols that can be identified by shared beliefs, rituals, a moral community, and the functional affirmation of social ties around things which are extraordinary or out of our everyday, ordinary lives. Religion and science are two separate domains or enterprises, although many of the new fundamentalist religious trends tend to fuse these into one system of absolute truth. In the mainstream religions, textual religions, especially in the Judeo-Christian tradition, Science provides knowledge, a growing base of knowledge, of the natural worlds through the accumulation of knowledge based on the empirical verification of a limited set of ideas or hypotheses that fit into a framework or paradigm of existing knowledge or empirical findings. Religion, by contrast, builds communities through tradition, wisdom, and moral guidance through a long history of cases, legal traditions, outcomes, and aesthetic traditions that are more accessible to insiders than to those unschooled. The religious beliefs and practices, the rituals, the socially defined understanding of the sacred thereby create a moral community. There's lots of material this week. Uh, I've extended the deadline to October 4th in view of the religious holidays next week. Uh, Contact me with questions. There will be a separate lecture that will outline for you again some of the things to look out for in your paper.